the button. Ah, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Should I turn that light on back then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I Yeah, turn it on. Yeah, you got to work, so I don't know, find out. George Abel, 111764. Alan Archery, 99433. Jared Osmo, 60173. Joseph Bird, 96194. Gloria Wendia, 53. Let's see. Karen Clement, 9585. Sign it. Oh, no, sorry. No, I don't have it. Michael Dane, 8. 86895, <coughs> Wayne Demerit, 75434, Kiki Donis Wall, 9212, Pamela Frederick, 14314, Ken Gauthier, 9791, Norman Graham, 89952, Andrew Gray, 54130, Andrew Greenbaum, 23106, Kurt Holston, 17141, Kip Kaiser, 75757. Michael Kilrain, 525.74. Hunter Lindsay, 576.06. Grace Miller, Boyd. Jason Mulberry, 59.10. Wayne Robinson, 797.46. Scott on the paper. David Roy, 832.79. Jeremy Smith, 560.01. Kathy St. Hilaire, 584.85. Katrina Tennant, 368.61. Josh Turner, 296.75, Janice Sears, 703.72, Anthony Walsh, 556.92. For a total of $15,664.10. For a total of $15,335. <coughs> These are going to be the 2018. Nice. Ready? Glenn Greenwood, 5,131.50. Division Solar, 243.33.52. Valak, 4,000. Oh, ask your voice then. <laughs> Citizens Bank, 202.91. See, I just did Citizens Bank, 359.43. For a total of $12,127.36. Oh, that's just enough, baby. Still, here you go again. Okay. 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 Hitch up to Bob. Are you guys fast? Are you going to do it? No. Back to Ready? Aflac, 52244. Urslac, 200. Howard Fairfield, LLC, 48340. 
Hartman Oil, 1,126.29. Health Trust, 11.54. Metro Kilwain, 65. New England Mobile Audio, 3,600. NHACC, um, 325. New Hampshire Municipal Association, 55. Primix, 37,199.93. SAU Treasurer, 185,000. Starkey Welding and Crane Service, 22,275. <coughs> Unifirst Corporation, 2646. Valak, 194,18. Viking Civis USA, Civis Corporation, 251,40. Waste Management, 3,445,50. Daphne Wall, 797. <coughs> a total of two hundred and thirty-four thousand eight hundred and five dollars and eighty-seven cents. A total of two forty-six nine thirty-three twenty. We had twenty-four and a half hours of work time in PD. Twenty hours for the fire planning board. Point five and highway point five. And we have four of Treasurer's report. Uh, previous balance $27,078.48. <coughs> Deposit $75,071.08. The payroll was $19,345.90. With the direct deposits of $15,664.10 and checks at $3,681.80. The payroll taxes were $4,836.09. The AP is two hundred and forty-six thousand nine hundred thirty-three dollars and twenty cents with a payment to Swayze of one hundred and eighty-five thousand. A transfer to the rec department for one hundred and eighty dollars. A void check returned or a check voided, three hundred eleven dollars and ninety-five cents. A transfer from the money market account of one hundred ninety thousand dollars, leaving the account balance at twenty-one thousand one hundred sixty-six dollars and thirty-two cents. We have four million dollars in CDs. Our unrestricted balance is one million four hundred and thirty eight thousand eighty three dollars and sixty two cents with total invested funds at five million four hundred and thirty eight thousand eighty three dollars and sixty three cents. Thank you. Thank you. Stop 19 Wilson Way, Philip Cronus, and this is for a generator. <coughs> Pickpocket Road, and it's Anton and Daphne Elmore, and this one is for a 
remodel. Two hundred two North Road, Robert Thornton, and we have one electrical permit. Same address, same person. We have an interior remodel. Twenty six Spruce Ridge Drive. And this would be not a, not a hard soggy, I believe. And this one is a <coughs> solar array and a battery wall. Same address and person, and this is the electrical portion. Next, we have 59 Lakewood, <coughs> Paul and Josie Brown. And this is a renewal of a zone permit for a dwelling. <laughs> and next is Town of Brentwood, 207 Little Road. And this is so we can file this as a record that we have sand and salt sheds that were erected. And we have 140 Crawley Falls Road, <coughs> uh, Town of Brentwood. And this one is the work done at the Grange. And the carpentry work there <coughs> was completed, so uh, that bill is being paid, I believe. just a memo on a couple of complaints that I investigated. Mm. No action was taken on either. more different than the normal spread of but it's allowed animal waste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends on the animal. <coughs> it's better to do it now than in the spring. Okay, do we have diffusers potentially for the light that the uh, I wish or timers maybe? Or motion? Okay, so if I remember correctly, those lights don't necessarily come with on an off switch. 
but they do come at dusk to dawn. Um, they're, they, on mo they're on a motion. Oh, on good. An eye, on an eye. Okay, so the other thing that possibly is the one that's directed towards the gas pumps and whatnot. I don't know. <coughs> we, turned, we, we turned it down tonight. Um, we, we also turned it more. Um, so we just, we gotta wait and find out. But what time did you do that, Dwayne? Uh, when, you, when you were pulling in there, we were doing that. Okay, because I didn't notice that it was shedding across the road at all. It, it, it doesn't um, as much, as it, there's a little bit, because when I drove out, I wanted to stop and look, um, but there's not near as much as there was when I, when I first did it. So. so we tilted it down. Uh, it's facing towards the front of the building a lot more now than it was. today um, about um, the petition I was going to bring up in front of the town as far as um, on town buildings that um, I'd like to see and a lot of people are in agreement that we have a building committee for any building that is built in the town of Brown as far as town buildings and the committee would consist of a selectman a uh, um, plan board member, three members of the town residents, and two members of the building where the building's being built. That would be a, a building committee. Um, we, I looked up, as far as I know, I thought we did have that, because I mean, every building that we've built in town so far, we've always had a building committee. This building, Fire department. We have Everything one for the we police department now. Well, no, but you don't understand what I'm saying. I mean, and, but when it came to our building, there was no building committee. Um, no. The, the stand salt check, and it should have been because it's a big expense. And in my opinion, and I've been, I've built enough of them. Those those buildings down there right now are not safe. None of the walls are tied in to each other. Okay? <coughs> Three straight wall. One this way, one this way, and one across the back. There's nothing from stopping and, and you gotta understand, you gotta you gotta a load up going in there and pushing to fill. The sand the salt, sand salt, salt, it doesn't matter. It's gonna disperse this way and this way. And you're gonna put pressure on a wall that has no structure as far as any pinning or nothing. And you, we've already seen the walls go like this. And once that sand salt gets in them cracks, the only way for it to go is out further. What are your thoughts, Kim, when you look at those buildings, the building inspector? Well, again, um, it, should, it should do what it's meant to do with, within reason. You can push anything out. Um, but I think under normal conditions, it should uh, be fine. The block is, um, actually there needs to be a little more filler on the, around the base. It didn't get spread all the way around here, but that'll help the, the bottom tier from pushing out at all. And the rest of it is those blocks have a small keyway in them. So they're not just gonna slide off one another. You'll have to <clears throat> push out a number of blocks at a time. So, but there's always a risk on the back <coughs> wall with the loader pushing into it. There's yeah, going to be a risk. Can, and you can't, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're out there and you've been out all night and you have loaded your truck and we've had it happen even on the wooden building, you know, I mean, accidents happen and you're tired, you're not thinking about 
Now everybody is aware that we're doing this, and so we have to be careful. Okay, but I mean, you, after a while, people are going to forget, and it's going to be, you know, and, and it is a concern. Well, so safety is a number one concern. Right. I understand. Well, yes. Um, but, you know, in, in, in the sad part is you can't fill in between the two buildings. So those two walls are going to be the walls that you're going to have to be really careful with. Because you got to, if you fill them up, then you've got no place for the snow to go. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want to fill it up. But um, you can the, fill it the in. plan called for a couple feet of fill around the, the bottom block. Just and that still needs to be done? It's still, yeah. It's yeah, we didn't done. have enough. We didn't, we didn't have any more material. I was going to try to use net back, but we ran out of that. <coughs> um, and then we ordered some gravel that we did, but um, you know, but we still got the problem with the with as far as where we're loading. Um, you know, you got the sand salt mix right there. It's not paved. It's not on pavement. It's on dirt. You know, and there is spillage. And you, you, I don't know you, for you, salt and sand if we would have had for salt and sand shed if we would have really had a building committee for that. Any building in town, we should have. Yeah, it was an emergency. We had to make that decision because the other one was falling apart. The other one when was I talked to Grace Fidler, I think his intent was more to start a building committee for the highway addition. The highway addition? Yeah. But we should have it for any building in town. And it, and, and, and it should be on record that there will be a building committee. And I'd like on to have the building inspector be part of it. No, the planning board of selectmen and three members. I'd rather, I'd like to have inspector <coughs> because he's going to make sure it meets code. He's going to make sure that it's meeting all the standards. Well, you're going to run it through him anyway. You, just like you do on a building. Right. So I, mean, I might as well use his gotta, expertise. You got to run it. No matter what, you got to run it through. So I might, might as well use his expertise when I'm doing the whole planning stage anyway. So that way I'm not having to redo it twice. A few that guys, would be my but I, I would, I would definitely, I want it, you know, somewhere where it's on record, because I look back and there's no place really where it's on record of it. It was just naturally done. Mm -hmm. So, do we do a motion to make a? If somebody wants to make. I'll make a motion that we, uh, that all prior town buildings have building committees of seven people, one selectman, one planning board, three people at large. And two members of that department who's having the building bill. What about the building inspector? Well, he'd just be an extra one. I mean, well, he's going to he's got to be. It's all got to go. Oh, and, and the building inspector would be eight then. Yeah, eight. Well, you have to have seven. Right. right. So there's two, two members. Two residents. Mm -hmm. So two. Two. Right. Oh, one, one department. department. Two yeah, can one, one, you can do three residents in one department. Mm. That 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 mean you can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I wonder if you're going to have trouble getting the residents. Residents to be on. I'm sure you'll get people who want to get involved in it. <coughs> so what, what is it again? <coughs> one selectman, one planning board member, the building inspector, two residents, and then two people from their respective department. Two or one. Two. One, two, three, four, five. Should be seven. Yeah. Seven three residents, one, one, one and one. Yeah. Well, the problem is, there's not a lot of departments you have two people. Like, if we put two people from the highway department on it, we're tying up the whole highway. <coughs> yeah, but most of the time, we're not in the anyway. <coughs> doing it. It's not during the day. But, but then they're paying you overtime to come here. <laughs> you're not paying me overtime. I'm you are here on the committee, yeah. unless you're volunteer for it. Oh, well, that's a volunteer. All our committees are volunteer. volunteer. Yeah. 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 I threw it out here. Maybe I'd say three and then one. Because if we have something from the rack, we only have one person on that. Yep. We have the rack. Yeah. So, yeah. so how about you don't put members and say BOSPB, building inspector, residents, who are members of the department yeah. with the intent to get to seven? Reckon? That works? Yep. Yeah, that works. That works. I'll change it to that then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, I'll second it. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? There you go. Okay. So now that I'll, I'll take it off the. That'll be a petition that'll be on the. No, no there will be no petition. No, we settled it right here now. Okay. All right. Good. You're all set. Thank you. Anything else, Kim?
Yeah, it seems we're uh, on that for the for the moment. Um, the other thing is, <coughs> previously um, there was a forty by eighty approved put out put out for bid. Yeah. Um, so thought process and listening to the board and to whatever, I'm not positive that that is the uh, the perfect building to meet the need or not. So my question is, before I go forward with that, do we want to rethink it? Planning committee and starting over? Sure. That's what you're going to do. day one. Yeah, we'll start over again. Because we kind of need to look at it a little bit differently. Yeah, probably. see what the needs are. You know, things change from the first day <coughs> we put out to the present time, so we'll get some more input. What's the plan for the fill that we get the finish? <clears throat> is it too late in the season to do that now? You or can, do we need to just get more material or what? What's the you could uh, well it depends on the pits and what's what's available. Maybe able to get something some that's not froze um, and get it spread. It has to be spread like the same day it gets dumped. And as Wayne said, you don't want to fill up totally between the two sheds. But you do need to put in a couple of feet of, of base. And that's what the original plan on that had called for, was it to be all the way around with the asphalt inside to lock them in. Um, the previous sand salt shed that you had drawn by the engineering company uh, well, it was also a three block high type of building. Um, you know, with with a little attention to use, it should, uh, should last quite a while. And we've got the, uh, the tar to the inside you know, to help. I mean, it is a two foot wide block. Each block weighs, you have to realize, about 3,500 pounds. So, you gotta move them. Slant the you gotta move them. <clears throat> you gotta move them. Okay. So, you gotta use care. So, what, what are we gonna do about the fill? Are we gonna, are we gonna look into a fill or not? I need you to know that. Are the so you, got, you got snow coming. You got Friday. snow coming Friday, you got snow coming Sunday. Yep. And I guess the Sunday storm is a real high accumulator. So you're not gonna be able to So knowing what you know, right. then you know you need to be much more yeah, cautious than you would normally be. Yeah. Okay, and, and when we get the weather break that we need, probably <coughs> probably not until spring, yeah. it's gonna be like it is. Right. Can't you do it tomorrow? Hmm. How long does it take to get filled? Well, <coughs> probably, you, you ain't gonna, you, uh, um, I believe Hartman down now. You could try Galloway. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to have them deliver. Yeah. Because you're gonna need big trucks, you're gonna need big loads. So why don't you look into that and see if they can have it out there before what do you want for before materials? Friday? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what do you want for material? Yeah, so it's supposed to be warm the next few days. Yeah, we well, should call it tomorrow. Yeah. So probably uh three quarter. Yeah, three quarter or, or inch and a half. Okay. Three quarter will pack okay, a little better. Reach, call reach out to Wayne and figure that out in the morning. You guys can sort that all out. Sure. Cool. Anything else? That's all that I've got. Nice. Anybody else anything for Kip? Nope. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kip. Thank you, Kip. Have a good evening. You. Jeff, you want to come up? Oh, boy. <coughs> Well, I didn't bring it up. You can bring it up. Seeing as you're here. Okay. <laughs> what do we got? Well, All right. There's a couple of things to bring up. Yeah. Um. So I guess the the smaller one that, that Phyllis just brought up is, uh, as you all hopefully know, uh, Conservation Commission has been working on putting in trails on the Martins and Stevens property and improving all of that and to sort of improve general awareness of how to use it. <coughs> I guess. Uh, we were interested in having just a whatever the standard issue street sign is put in at the end of Old Hague Road and South Road so that people can find it and not just think it's someone's just someone's driveway. Um, just so that people realize that they can walk down that way or you know, that they bike down that way and you can drive
drive in and drive out and not park because it goes through like a public way. So is it? And my understanding was just that it was a named old hay road. That's what I've seen it called, but I don't I don't have a stake in what street we, listing. We don't have old hay road. We just have hay road. So I don't know if you can put old hay road or put hay road. Well, you could put old hay road. You just have to make it a different color than our street signs. So would you oh. make it like those brown and or brown or right, right. Oh. for recreation <laughs> recreational signs? And I'm not attached to it being called old old hay road. I just thought that was the name. So I mean if. If it's officially Hay Road, then we should. Is it that split rock area we were talking about? Yep. Yep. So putting up a sign that says Hay Road or whatever and Classics Road, you know, whatever, but standard signage that we put up on, on roads that aren't really the same thing. But I mean, we already have the Hay Road, so I'd say it wouldn't hurt just to put Old Hay Road because it's not really a road, it's just kind of a sign. Yeah, it's not a road. It's a trail sign. Well, it's a public way. You just trail go on it. You didn't get through. Right when recreation commission used. Where are we talking about? Nobody else. Just the south road side? Yeah. 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 Yeah
What happened was three or four people with Jeeps came across that new bridge uh -huh. and they could get, I mean, it was just wide enough for those Jeeps to get across the bridge and their tires were almost off the edge. The Magnusons, whose property they were on, <coughs> hey, Dwayne. The Magnusons, whose property they were accessing, don't want motorized vehicles on their property. And when we went over and talked to the people down there, in fact, I think we've got the police department down there to tell them that they couldn't keep going. One Jeep almost went off the road. That's a new road that's wide enough for horses and people to walk on and so on. So I'm not sure I'd be comfortable with having that advertised. And it was somewhere, and some, but they couldn't tell us what website it was, but they said they found it. No, but it wasn't Which Google, is, excuse me, it, one got stuck, because we were happy yeah. to be walking on the trail coincidentally that time. One got stuck on the actual bridge. On the bridge. So that was problematic. Because it's not wide And enough. one, I think there were two, it might have been three, but two didn't attempt the bridge, but the one that attempted got stuck. Okay, so that was really I, I, also, I don't want people driving through there. Right. Right. What I'm trying to say is, it's a public way, it provides access to the conservation area, I want Tomorrow. just something that says this is the name of the road, whatever it is, and it is a class six road. It, it was advertised on the New Hampshire Trail website. Right it wasn't a Google, it was like a New Hampshire Trail. New Hampshire Trail website or something like that. I guess that's what it was. No, it doesn't. Okay. So it's just the same. Yeah. I think it just says, hey, road going <coughs> south roadside. Yeah, yeah. So I always heard it yeah, called Old Hague, but it sounds like on the map it's just Hague. So that's just fine for me. Or yeah, if we use a record sign and call it Old Negro because that's what it's colloquially known as, then that's fine with me too. I just want people to be able to find it if they want to have a, get a different access way into the area. No, is it? But if they're, what you're saying is that they can drive down there. I know you can well, drive down there. Well, parts of it they can drive down there. They can drive down there anyway to, class six they can go down. To, to log and so on. But I'm not sure. So I know one side of it's Robinson's property, one yeah, part of it's Stevens' property, and I don't know if that was Martin's property or not. I think that's town land on, the, on, the, on one side as well, which I think the town um, we can go down there leased. You no, know, I think the town leased the land last year, or at least authorized the one guy to probably use his cows down there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an issue with the fencing. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Right, so that's the ad, that's the area we're trying to get people to be able to access on foot or on bike or whatever they're doing or on horse. And I, but not that motorized vehicles. I'd like to have it restricted to that. I don't know. That's not my purview. And if you I guys, think that's, that's conservation. I mean, I think that's the easement, right? Whatever the easement. Well, no, is. this is a road. This is this still easement. a town road. How is it? This is a town road thing. Is it so if, and if you want to add a sign that says parking 500 measure whatever parking 900 feet whatever it is down the road to make sure. People park where there's parking spots, and if there's not encouraging to drive there, but just know it's an access. So, way. do we want to have a motion to have Jeff and Wayne sort out getting a sign made there? Won't we see what the permissible use is? Okay. Because when we make the sign, if <coughs> motorized vehicle is not permissible use, we can actually put that on the sign. sign yeah. We're just yeah. Huh? Just a little, a little history, and I, I don't know the member of the Conservation Commission, if you could introduce Jeff yourself. Jeff Donald, the chair of the commission. What is it again? Jeff Donald. Nice to meet you, Jeff. This, this um, when the town went through this exercise, a portion of that road is Class 6, and then another part of it's a municipal trail. And there was a huge debate at town meeting probably 12 or 13 years ago on what the allowed uses were going to be as far as um, open for traffic, and it varied from road to road, because I happen to live on a Class 6 road that's followed by a municipal trail. So I understand they want to put a sign up so people can use it, uh, but when you start talking about banning traffic, there's people that use that to access their property down there. There's other people that like to go out in their Jeeps and drive <coughs> down there. Um, I would just ask the board not to go down that road. Um, I think right now we're, the goal is just to find out what is currently on the books as permissible use and mm -hmm. sign it. Mm -hmm. However, that is worded. Is what we're yeah, so about. whatever the permissible use is, then we'll put that on the sign. Right. And I'm really going to change anything. We just want it noted. Right. Do you, do you know where the Class A trail starts when you go down that road? Not off the top of my head, no. That's part of what we need to. I mean, we don't want to steer people the wrong way. We don't want to prevent people from doing something they can or encourage people to do something they can. We just want to 
get sort of the go-ahead to figure it out and come up with a sign. Yeah, just to be clear, I, I think it's great, and I would love to see the signage, and I would love to see the town do a little maintenance so people can actually enjoy that road and also the other roads like that in town that, that aren't being maintained. Okay, well, I'm actually here for it. <laughs> Sorry about that. For <laughs> Phyllis threw me under the bus. She's <laughs> not prepared. <laughs> um, so the Conservation Commission is interested in conserving a piece of property <coughs> in town. We've been working with the Southeast Land Trust of New Hampshire to do that. Uh, and they are working on their portion of it is sort of doing all the paperwork and filing for the federal, what's called an AIL grant, Agricultural Land Easement Grant make that happen. Uh, the town does need to come up with a portion of the funds as well. Um, so this is the Martin property, which we just looked at. So <coughs> abutting the other Martin property where we're in the Stevens property where we're putting in the trails. Um, it'll be, it's about a, a little bit under about 37 acre property, about 24 acres of it would get conserved. I actually brought you a picture and I as well see it. Around. Yeah, thank you. Right there right there. The blue dot on it. Blue dot? Is that a hot tub? Oh, no. Thanks. <laughs> it's a hot tub. <laughs> Ew. It's actually it's deep. Um, so the, the section with the thicker deep. orange line yeah. is the portion that yeah. would be conserved. Yeah. So the section right here? Yep. Uh, and then the section next to it with the, co with the cross hatching. That is part of the same property we do not conserve because it's already got roads and buildings and, and a lot going on. Um, so this is contiguous with the other, with the Martin property that the town owns and that's being used for conservation and that's always something we shoot for with conservation is contiguous properties. Um, this also sort of conserves the large flat <coughs> land on what is currently a pretty relatively quiet rural road and we'd like to keep it that way. Uh, we also want to keep the soils available for the town. Um, we do have a, a soil map sort of showing, you know, soils of statewide, or farmland, sorry, of local importance, farmland of statewide importance, uh, and prime farmland. So it's got good soils that we want to protect. Um, it also obviously just reduces development <coughs> in the town, uh, which is something that we're a big fan of. Um, so we'd like to. And then here's the map that sort of shows, and this might be a, a year or something out of date, but you can just sort of see where other conservation is happening here, and then this is sort of extending that, sort of creating a sort of a solid area of conservation. Is there any way, is there other land that's <coughs> available to conserve to link, like right where your uh, left hand is, the purple and the, and the orange? So these are conserved. Uh, oh, you the, oh, between those I'm two? I'm looking at whatever this section is right here. I think that is town owned. So, this, owned. so oh. this is town This is town owned. It's yeah. not technically conserved, but the town's been just sort of holding like that, and Stevens here is conserved. Oh, so this would link all, all these all yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole this, whole section. This is sort of is a good continuation of work we already have conservation. Is this conserved or anything? Yep. Yeah. I have a question for you. On the Martin land, yes. you want to put it? Can he still use that as far? I mean, <coughs> 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 that's the whole. That's it's an agricultural easement, yeah, so, he so it's still designed to allow people to okay. continue to farm. That's why I am probably without that being able to build them. Mm -hmm. Build the houses. And there had been discussion at one point about carving off an extra little lot for future development, but we've, that's been decided against. It's just going to be that's right. that whole 24 acres right there and just concerned. He wants to build. He had talked yeah. about it, but we're not. He's not showing. Uh, so the amount, amount of funding that the, that the land trust uh, would need, $150,000. Uh, that number would be larger, but the landowner has actually donated a fair amount of the value away. So he's not taking as much as theoretically he would get if he got the, the full value under the assessment. Um, so very generous of the landowner. So I've, and I didn't think to print out, did you give them a copy of the Warren article? That I, okay, great. So you all have the Warren article that I've drafted. Um, as you can see how it's worded, if anything falls apart, then we don't just sort of hold on to the money to do something else with, and it just sort of. Now how's that work with 
them using it in taxes? How does that whole process work? Uh, it doesn't really change their taxes because it's already over 11 acres, so I'm sure it's already in current Good use. And based on experience, current a transition to current use, the easement doesn't help your taxes any or hurt your taxes any. I have a question you probably don't know. How many houses could they put in it if we don't conserve it? I don't have, we didn't. That was we thought about do we paying for that because that's a right. question you'd have to hire somebody to answer okay. for you exactly. But it's 24 acres of flat land, so they could put <coughs> a fair amount of frontage. So, so this is a bargain doing this one fifty. It's a bargain as far as more homes, more yep. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all it's and it's cool. most. Yeah. This you can see it's clear. But John, that's good. Most land, land is clear. clear. So it's worth well more than that 150 for where they're I think so. oh, yeah. And we, we haven't finalized it, yeah. uh, but we are planning on sort of the, the, he has some woods that are part of his, and so there is sort of discussion that we <coughs> leaving sort of that on the table that our trail system might be able to tie in with his woods a little bit. He doesn't have a lot of woods, yeah. um, but just sort of having that available as well if we need, if we need to cut through for the, for the trail system. Yeah. What's the board's thoughts? Was DRA good with the board? What's the board's thoughts? I like the idea of you know, where we have the land there and the trails already in town land. We can hook it all together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a small price to pay to save that from being developed. I agree. I'm sure it will be down the road if we don't do something with it. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's, he's hurt. So do we have a motion to support the warrant? I'll make a motion to support the warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There you go. All right. Okay. Wait, you tell me to wear your suit, Jeff. <laughs> just, a, just a question why the conservation commission members here. Does the easement this proposed guarantee public access? Uh, on, not on the whole property. We didn't think it's appropriate for hay fields, but for the, we're working, we're in the process of negotiating it, but the part of it that's woods and that ties into the trails we're going to probably end up negotiating public access on that portion. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thank you. We have another one to go with you. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I managed to stick it out with just one. I'm proud of myself. New year, new man. You still got to do minutes. And oh, motion for minutes? Uh, motion for minutes, regular minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for the non-public minutes. Motion for the non-public. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ellen, you want to come up? Yes, sir. 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 You just dropped the paper with my name, Chief. Something came up. Remember why George just laid me there? Remember your foot, George? Left of your foot. Your foot, foot's almost gone. Seriously? Yeah, it's right the paper clip. Oh, that's a paper. That's a paper clip. Oh, I thought you said that. That's kind of cold, too. You can see that. I thought it was a bullet. I don't know. I thought a bullet fell out. Before we get going, I just want to acknowledge that. Yeah, because they want to. And then decide if we're going to have competing budgets. 
Yeah, because I know one of the concerns that they brought up yesterday was, uh, like, for example, in here, it's a 5% increase for the captain, but actually in the thing it was 8.5% increase. So that was something we picked up on. So there's a couple other things. <coughs> I emailed you a couple of the tweaks that I got related to that. Um, do we have copies of the new budget or, or what? This is the one that was just No, I got that us. last Thursday, so I got I made copies for you. <coughs> I can send you a copy tomorrow. Okay. But this isn't that far enough. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. I'd, I'd like a copy. What's the total up that we're looking at? It's down. Down. It's down 15,000. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean like total operating budget? Yeah, yeah from last year to this year. What, what, what were we talking about? 3.9% oh. up? For the for BOS the, budget. 3.6 okay. for BICOM. But for the police budget, from what we approved, it's, it's been revised $15,000. Right. Okay, less. Okay. Right. So, okay. Okay, so the second um, item is um, I have it running. Chris Rockwell has requested a leave of absence due to an injury. I have no issue with it. It didn't occur with us. Do we know how long the leave of absence is going to be? Do not know. We'll have to provide a doctor's note if he intends on returning. Okay. What will we lose? What, how, how many shifts is he? Um, he does one, one on shift duty. Okay. So we're, we're emailing him another yeah. part timer or another person to fill in the so Obviously, somebody has to take that shift. Some of that stuff I already purchased, that's okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Right. 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 Did you get the other quote? <coughs> I called today and she was out sick. I sent her an email. I'm like, that's what it is. So. <coughs> that I have with the uh, purchase orders that have already gone up, I'm assuming they've already cleared. So what we've already sent up, I'm assuming is already been deducted from this. So what I did is I actually went out, deducted that, and looked at, see what was outstanding, and it didn't. We're looking to purchase a new copier, which is allowing me to reduce the 2019 budget by doing that. So with what we have outstanding, already been paid, we're equating to 22500 that I'm requesting to be in <coughs> I think the question is, what does the 22000 Yeah, sell? I think you have, to have, you have to have a... Like, how much was paid? So, like, out of all those that you already have that have yeah. already been paid, yeah. remove those from that number. Now what do I have? I, I did. 
So then, and that's where you're still at 22. That's one of my questions, Lou. So then, she had a list of everything you need. Well, we don't have a list. We don't have the list. We need the list. I'd like to see what the list is and what, well, what we're getting here. The I've copier is not 22,000, so it's going to be something besides the copier. So we, I'm okay with the copier. That's fine. Probably save some money there. But. Okay, we per I can tell you what we purchased. So we, we need to know what, what this 22,000 is. What do you want to purchase? Yeah, what do you want to buy with the 22,000? Right. The coffee okay. machine is how much? 5900 Okay. So 14 Safari Land holsters at $1,236.90. That's $1,236.90. $14 Streamlight TLR 1HL for tactical lights. With lithium batteries at seventeen ninety nine, that's seventeen hundred and ninety nine dollars. <coughs> two Streamlight Pro Tac rail mounts for our two rifles that we need rail mounts for at two hundred and sixty one dollars and ninety eight cents. Two Sig Sauer Romeo 5 compact red dot sights, motion activated red dots at $316. That's been purchased. Has it been paid? Um, no, that is what is outstanding. We have not paid that yet. So you guys sell the net the last Correct. Two years. Two Magpul MOE polymer rail section five slots at nine dollars and seventy cents. Fifty nine hundred for a new copier. We have not purchased that yet. Okay. Uniforms from Neptunes for two officers uh, to include ballistic vests and carriers. $9,853.87. That has not been paid. <coughs> Another ballistic vest and carrier at $1,093.79. That has been paid. The Interwear Dog Lookup Program at $300. That's been paid. Police officer tests at $335.60. And that's been paid or no? That's been paid. We've had a voucher come up. The ID creator at $39.99. That's been paid. Uh, PD supplies, $144.06. That's been paid. We just need to know the ones that aren't paid. I'm at nineteen thousand three seventy six fifty five right now for what has not been paid. I can tell you what has. I, I gave you the figure. Yep, and I've been adding them up as we've been going. So I, what I've got here, I mean, I can keep going. Can I got the copier. Something. I got the holsters. Yep. I got the, the lights at seventeen ninety nine. I got the rifle mounts. Protec mounts at two sixty one ninety eight. I got the six hours three sixteen. I got that little. Thing for nine dollars, mm -hmm. some odd sense. I got the unit <coughs> nine thousand eight fifty three eighty seven. What's yeah, what's the last one that I stopped at? The uniforms and vests, nine thousand yeah. eight hundred fifty three dollars. That has not been paid. Right. Yep. Right. And that's what we're. So I, you want to know what has not been paid? Correct. 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 Okay. So the uniforms from Neptunes, yep. ninety eight hundred fifty three dollars and eighty seven cents. Yep. The uh, tactical lights and holsters and rail mounts for a total of $3,622.58. And then $419.50 for pet insurance. Wasn't that part of the budget? Well, that's just items she's trying to remove out of the yes. 2019 budget to save. Yep. And that's it. So, and the 
419 to what you had before. Yeah. You should get 1,621 dollars and ninety-five cents. I got 1,796 over five, so I must have been. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what were the holsters? 5,900. How much were the holsters? Plus the 1,236. 1,290. 2,699. Yep. Yeah. Plus the 261.98. Yep. Plus the 316. Mm -hmm. Plus that $9.10 it was. Seven. Seven. <coughs> Plus nine thousand eight hundred fifty three dollars and eighty seven cents. That's four nineteen. And on the four nineteen, are you adding? You have the three thousand six twenty three fifty. Eight. Oh, fifty eight. Yeah. That's so the thirty six twenty three fifty eight. Mm -hmm. That is for the holsters and the, the uh, tactical lights, <coughs> the two rail mounts for the rifles. Oh, that's everything that you broke that's out earlier. That's everything. So, all right. So yes. that gives me this. is that figure. All right. So that, that brings me to 19,796.95. So, but are you adding the 5,900 onto that? Yes. That's, it's in that the, has not been paid. Yeah, so that was that already in there. I have not ordered that. Yeah, yes, if that was added in my home. Okay. That's, that's how same. I came up yep. with the 19,796.95. And that's what I got. 19,000 what? 19,796.95. Mm -hmm. With everything that she just went over. Okay. Yes. Including the pet insurance. Okay. So that's the number we're looking at now. That's the number I have that she's looking to do as a whole Correct. Right. Right. So we have a motion for 19,796.95, unless you can tell us why we need to do something different than that number. Well, you know what I did is I actually added on um, the 2625 for a, a taser and the batteries, but we weren't able to get that dated for December. So. So that can't get that. So yeah. we can't get that in there. Yeah. Okay. So. So that will bring it down to the 1976.95 number. Okay. So do I have a motion for this 19,796.95 number? To encumber. Yeah. To encumber. Make a motion. Do I have a second? <coughs> Choking over here. I'm choking. Choking? Go, go ahead. I'll make a second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? You're good to go for 17,796. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Impact What's that? Impact piece. Oh, do you have that quote? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. What's that? <coughs> that's for the, um, for the, the, the radar. Sign. Oh, the radar sign. Yes. The solar power radar sign. For $4,363.30. And the impact piece. And the trailer. Do we have the money in there? Is it a trailer? Or just a sign? No, you, um, you actually can attach it hmm? to. The speed limit they had a little, the county had one of the county things. Right, it yeah. looks similar to that. Yeah. Yep. So we have the money in the impact piece that we can buy. <clears throat> well, does it track historical data? Yep. yep. I included a, a quote in there for Bluetooth to be able to pull the data. Sure. Yeah, total is a 4,363. <clears throat> How much? $4,363.30. Sure you'll be making some residents on TikTok. It will be very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion for 30. What's it? 34? 4,363 dollars and 30 cents. 4,363 dollars and 30 cents on impact fees or riots. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Would like to encumber $5,500 uh, for Glenn's contract for the master plan. Is that what we just did today? We wanted to check that out. No, those are his monthly invoices. Oh, okay. So this is a different contract for the master plan update. So is it encumbering? Yeah. Is it in their budget? Yeah. So do we have to do that for the budget? Oh, in the 2019 
$8,335.85. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Come on, Bill. Second. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is to reappoint Edie Shipley until 2022. To what? Conservation. Do I have a motion? As a regular member. Motion. And Bill, do we have a second? Yeah, second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> there you go. Call me out. Reed Bunker is an alternate to conservation. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the Rec Commission, Christina Benant resigned from the Recreation Commission, and this is to appoint Aaron Kelly to fill her term. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? I, I, to appoint I, I, Aaron I, I, Kelly to the Rec Commission because someone resigned? Yes. Bill, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Me too, far ahead of us. Tell me to my name. Right on next yeah, time. Yeah, we're, we're <coughs> it's it's like reading the check. <laughs> yeah, I'm too fast. We'll keep it moving. William. I didn't read some of the people that I'm voting to get in. Well, if they come meet you when to use the coffee selectman, you can meet them all. You want to do what? I want to suggest to people that we're appointing who I don't know come and see me on the Wednesdays down here. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to Karen's Warren Articles, which are on the back of our sheets. Okay. 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 Article 1, Kino. Do you want to have it on the warrant? No. I think it got shut down last time. Right? <clears throat> Until we have a business in town that will purchase it. Okay. That wants to. <coughs> Solar array? Yes. That has to go, yeah. Yeah, that has to go. Yeah. Do we need a motion for these? Yeah, do you want to review them first and do one motion to the yeah. or do you want to do them one by one? That's up to you. <coughs> Just review them all and then we'll go through them. <coughs> yeah, if there's any discussion, we can have it at that time. CRF software and municipal operations. Twenty thousand. How long? How often do we do that update? That is the that is the uh, capital reserve that's with the intent to replace all of the software in the town office. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have a uh, capital reserve fund for the IT. Hold on. Harder. I think Bill's got a question. Oh. I just wanted to mention getting that. Um, that it's been what two or three years. Sixty-one thousand yeah. dollars. Okay. Similar thing. What do we have in that fund? That's a five-year. That's the fund to replace all of our hardware every, at least once every five years, and that has fourteen thousand dollars in it right now. Okay. Do we do we we do that on a revolving? We don't do it, fund. Yeah, but I mean we, we don't replace everything all at once. We do it as a little bit at a time. Yeah. Yes. And then the reevaluation, we do that. Instead of taking that one hit, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 we do that every year. How much is in that? We should be getting close to it. That's at 77, and you'll be doing a reveal in 2020. So you yeah, do start the data up. collection in 2019. So, so it'll be that's so we don't starting all that stuff this year, and then yeah, next year it'll sure be hit us. Um, capital reserve fund for maintenance of town buildings, 50,000. So how much do we have now? That's 43 in there right now, and about eight of it has to go out to. Library. Oh, the so we're at uh, 35. Okay. Plus, I think that's still getting into the painting bill for the library. Do we go 715 or is the page I'm missing? 
Oh, I know I took those out because those are the ones that are, the ones in between okay. are like okay. highway and food that they present themselves. Okay. CASA, $500. Did they come back before us? Okay. Yep. And even? Yeah. That was the one that we didn't go through last year? Yeah. Because it was worded incorrectly? So yeah, and I made the change in the system. I just printed a couple of those out. Funding two new heights? Yeah. No, it's to Haven. So this should say Haven. I made this change in the software system already. Okay, so new heights will say Haven. Yeah. Um, one sky, $1,500. Task? Mm -hmm. That's the transportation system. Okay, that's 750 Is that what we did last year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the second year on the warrant. Children Chamber Fund, $1,000, and increased vet credit from 400 to $500. Now, did any of these, did CASA, Haven, One Sky, Task, or Children Chamber Fund, did they come before us to ask to be put on here, or we just automatically put them on here? No, they all sent a letter of request. Okay, for that amount of money. Mm -hmm. Is the reference one, is that what, is that his petition? That was what Bill Kalashi came in. Is that the number he came up with? That's the max allowed. Is oh, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. And that's a state. Right? That's, that's an RSA max. max. Mm -hmm. okay. How much will we lose on that? Um, I think it was about 7000 Seventy. But you gained your freedom. <laughs> I've, I, I have had a very good military experience. So I don't know you guys. That was it so far. That's good. Anybody have any thoughts or discussions on any <coughs> No, I don't have any hardware in any of them, so. Do you uh, ex except for one thing. Somewhere in the space of our meetings this year, we I think we talked about having a cap on our generous. Yeah, yeah, and saying this is how much money we're going to have. Yeah, it can be divided up amongst whatever. Whoever's there. And because otherwise, we already have $15,000 that goes mm -hmm. into the budget automatically. Fifteen thousand. And now we and then we continue. This would add, add these little ones. It, it's not a lot, but it's well. This would be forty-five, five thousand, seven fifty. Another three thousand. Six thousand. No more than that. Oh, yeah, three thousand just for you guys have talked about doing yeah. that in the spring and sending them all. So letters. this would get up to like <coughs> one grand. Notify them all. So, a generosity. <laughs> when do we think we're going to have that? Discussion where we say, "Here's how much we're going to provide for charity, and that's it." When are we going to have that conversation? We had talked about doing it in like the spring and the fall, and so that we could give should them we, time to send them letters to draft them. Let should them we know bring it up at town meeting and say, "This is what we would like to pursue," and see what the town feels like? I think that's. The I'd be all for taking these off and doing one Warren article that says. For that line item, this is we would like to for that. Um, I don't think we can just do it in the void. I think we have to incorporate the town into our thoughts and say mm -hmm. this is what our plan, this is what our intention is, or this is what we'd like to do, and have the town say yay or nay. Okay. Because this is coming out of their pockets too. It's not. Yeah, not it's like coming out of the taxpayers. Right? right. It's coming out of everybody's pockets. They should have it on. And if I have an organization that I feel strongly about, I donate to it. I'm so my feeling. thought is, is I have a hard time donating taxpayer dollars yep. towards a cause that maybe not everyone would support. So well, just cap it like at twenty dollars, and that's what we're going to spend. And that well, that's where we we had talked mm -hmm. about doing that. But the, the other the other, other issue too is this is welfare money we're not spending either. That's true. So it's something that we have to present. Right. Right. So if you eliminate some of these organizations, you you'll have, have a much larger amount of welfare money. Right. But if you keep all these and start more from coming in and say, okay, we're going to cap it at twenty, twenty-five thousand, mm -hmm. and that's that, because you already got the ones you're doing anyway. So we're up to fifteen plus this, and we're over twenty thousand now. This will be over twenty. Yeah, I mean, if you cap it at twenty-five, the ones we've got, we'll do, and then well, anyway, we just can't put a number. I'm fine with even putting that out as a advisory article. Advisory article. What are you guys' thoughts about doing an advisory article for that, just to see what the pulse of the town is? If that's what Bill was leading to. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is it not a selectman's policy that got us into this? Because in the past, every group had to petition, yep. get their 25 signatures. And then at some point <clears throat> in the past, the Board of Selectmen adopted a policy to say, 
if you've got it past three years in a row, we're just going to put it on the warrant. No, they put it into the budget. Put it in the budget. So, so can't you, as a board, remove it? Remove that policy, and then whichever warrant articles you think are going to save the taxpayers money by sponsoring, you guys make that decision. And then, if anybody else wants money from the town, they've got to get the signatures and bring in the warrant article. But I think I think a previous board made that decision, and that's why these things are starting to stack up. And I, and I appreciate that you want to hear the townspeople speak, but it's the board that adopted that policy. I think the board has no problem changing that, Butch. I think what Bill was looking at is you wanted to hear what the town had to but, think about it. But can I piggyback on that? Because it was my understanding that we did talk about this last year, and we there did. was some discussion about taking the, as Butch said, I would rather see them all come out of the budget, and all of those people have to come out. I'd be all for that too. But but I, I don't think I said meeting. that. I said, <laughs> no, but I mean that's what I. That's little, no, I know that'd be a very long said, meeting. Yeah, yeah but <coughs> but maybe you have a. It, it, it's kind of confusing to have to have people think they're only spending this sixteen thousand, and they don't realize. I never knew all those people were in the regular budget until last year. I didn't know which ones were in the budget, which, and I know you had a, one that went out of town, so you had to take it out of the budget. I mean, this this has already been discussed for an entire year, and we haven't made any changes. But it never this came. Year. It never came <coughs> to the town. We never said to the town, "Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take all these charitable organizations that we've been funding for the last however many years, and we're not going to do that anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to say, here's a pot of money, and divide it up. Whoever gets here first, because that's where it was left." Whoever gets here first, they're going to get the money, and the rest of it, sorry, you're not going to get it. And I don't know that we can do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that in the void. I know we have the power and the authority to do that. I just don't think it's appropriate for us to exercise that power and authority to say, hey, you know what, this is what we're doing now. Going forward, you know, the no, I get previous it. board did that, and now we're going to say? change that. I don't think we should be doing that. All right. What's the advisory thing going to say, though? I don't get what you're Just what we said, what, what, what our plan is. Our plan, plan is, is to have a cap on what we're going to give as charitable and <coughs> the process of how that's going to work. We'll see if the town agrees with us when we go to the town meeting. <coughs> yeah, we'll ask for that pulse. So, do we have a motion on these Warren articles as presented? Or do you want to do each individual? How do you guys want to do it? There's no sense it's all pretty cut and dry on that. Yeah. All right, so we'll do them all at once. All right, do I have a motion to accept them as written all at once? Motion. And do I have a second? <coughs> second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. Right. Right. And do I have a motion to put that advisory warrant article out there? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Thank you. Next. <laughs> That's it? No, 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 yeah, I'm not doing anything. Oh, I'm retired. Oh, you have to. Is that it? Is that all you got? For everything during the day. No. Just remind me that the day's done. All right, cool. We should do Cali. It's about last year. I keep looking at the wrong day. We're trying to keep control of our. I wish I knew. I just bought one in there. There's one up in Maine. They were giving all these vendors dropped off stuff. They were like, hey, Cali. I was like, I don't need something that big. We'll get to now. Do you have any room left? Well, I mean, you guys get out of here. I'm going to give you a paper. I'll bring it back to you next week. Oh, is Daphne? Oh, yes, that's right. Come on down, Daphne. I think I get bored. Your next contestant. I didn't think you would. I think it would take a month. We're almost there. Sorry. So I just wanted to address the board, and I was hoping I could just read what I have without interruption. This past Friday, I was called into the office on my day off to diffuse a situation that involved a person on the select board. 
the employees in my office felt intimidated and bullied. I have addressed the same situation one time before with this select person and felt that we had come to an understanding. I feel that one of my jobs is to protect my office and the employees that I work with. On Friday, the select person chose to go through the key box and drawers in the back office, and when they didn't find what they were looking for, they yelled at my employee that it was her job to give her what she wanted. My employee had no idea where to even begin looking for what they wanted and texted me. Keep in mind, they were also training a new employee that had been there just over a week. I texted back to my employee to ask this person to return on Monday, and I would find what they needed. They said no, it was needed right now, and raised their voice and yelled at the employee that there was no need to text me every time they came into the office asking for something. My employee asked that I please come in because this person was not going to leave. Needless to say, I came in and searched in the vault for what they claimed was for their personal knowledge. The whole situation appeared underhanded and hostile. I would first like to say that if this select person is working on behalf of the select board, which I do not believe they were, the behavior displayed would be considered an abuse of power. No one should have to worry about coming into work and being treated with complete disrespect. We treat each other with respect and kindness. No one is superior to anyone here. If this person was acting on their own behalf as a resident, the same rules would apply to them as any resident. I do not have residents in the back room going through drawers or the, or the vault. A request would be made, and if it fell under the right to know law, I would provide that information in five business days or sooner if I was able to. If the board feels that they or anyone else that does not work in this office on a daily basis should be authorized to be in the back room involved, I'm going to ask to have two safes installed in the back room to keep the town's money, decals, registrations, as well as any other items that are private secured. Perhaps some privacy or right to know training would be helpful for any town official or town employee to make them aware of the legalities of the situation. In order to eliminate a hostile work environment, this intimidating behavior will not be tolerated <coughs> in my office by a town official, town employee, or resident. If you are unable to control yourself and be kind, I would respectfully request you do not come into my office. respond to that that's totally I just asked to see the minutes I was not rude or if she gets intimidated because I come in and ask I'm sorry but I feel as a selectman I have a right to go in and look at the key if I the key box and I have a right to be in I'm not going to touch anything in that back room well I know the like this key box we need three selectmen you need three selectmen, you need a quorum, right, to go in the key box? Well, see, I've never been told that. There's things that, you know, I've never been told that, that I can't do this or I can't do that. <coughs> in certain areas I don't go into, I mean, I mean, I, I go to the library. <laughs> I go to I the library. The I go to the library nine-tenths of the time to do my research because it's very hostile when I come in here. So I go to the library, but they didn't have those minutes that I wanted to look at. Well, so I, I believe the procedures for us is you need three selectmen to go into that box, which has been communicated. Mm -hmm. Well, none of you should be acting on your own behalf. I mean, you should. I wasn't. I was on my own. I wasn't doing it for the selectmen, but I just felt it was I'm a selectman, so I can. If if that's the case, then we need to. Bill and I need to be given the rules and the regulations. We don't know. We feel like outsiders, at least I do. I don't know about Bill. Uh, well, I will tell you how I feel. I'm new, you're right. There's things that I don't know, there's things that may exist that may be procedures we haven't been communicated, that's fine. I believe as a selectman, I'm held to a higher standard than as an ordinary citizen. Given that fact, I think that my behavior, what I say, how I act, whether I think people are looking at me or not doesn't matter because people do look at me. When I say something, it's not just Bill Free as citizen, it's Bill Free as selectman representing the whole town. How I act is Bill Free as selectman representing the whole town. Whether I'm doing something on my own, whether I'm doing something that I've been asked to do as a selectman, doesn't matter. There are certain things that I know I shouldn't be doing, I don't need to be told. 
For example, I don't go into Karen's office. I could. I certainly have the right to go in there. There's mail in there that I can go and look at whenever I feel like it, but that's her space. She works there every day. I feel it would be a violation of her space and her workspace for me to be just going in there. Um, I, would, I would never go in there and take keys at, at, with one caveat. If there was some huge emergency going on and she wasn't available and nobody was around, as a selectman, I think I should be able to do that. But that would be a rare, rare, rare exception. Going into your office, you're an elected official just like I am. I have no right to go into your office and go through your stuff, whether you're there or not, any of your other employees are there, I think I need to treat them the same way that I would expect to be treated if I were sitting on that side of the table. So having said that, yeah, there are things I don't know about, but I think I, think I need to act in a, certain, in, in, a, in a certain way that portrays to the whole town that's taken their trust and put it in me, this is how, what you expect. And having said that, I know I'm gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. We all make mistakes. But there are certain things we shouldn't be doing, period. And I think we all know what those are. There are certain parameters we shouldn't cross. And yeah, do we have the right to do it? I don't think we have the right to do it. We have the authority to do it. We have the power to do it. We shouldn't use that power and we shouldn't abuse it. And here's what I will end up with. And I've told some of the police officers this, and I know it's probably a bad example, but I've told them, you get a gun and a badge for a reason. Don't be an a-hole. Okay, that's the way I feel we should be. Don't act like an a-hole. Don't, don't, don't act like an a-hole? <laughs> hey, I started on Facebook. <laughs> sorry. sorry for that. Okay, but it, you know, the, the, the point is, I would agree. they have authority, they have a gun and a badge for a reason. And when they stop you and they question you and they want to talk to you, you need to treat them with the same respect that you would treat them. And, and I feel the same way. When I talk to somebody, I need to treat them with respect. And, <coughs> and act appropriately. I'm, I'm a selectman. I'm, there's only five of us. Geez, we should we should act appropriately since we're representing everybody in town. Hello. My whole point of bringing this up is not to shame anybody on the board. It is oh, simply to say. That. Thank you. It is simply to say that there is intimidating behavior, right. and if I have multiple people saying it to me, I have to address it. There are employees in my office. Fine. That's fine. Okay. Whatever. Noted. Okay. I appreciate you Thank coming you. in. Thank, Thank you. you. But I, I would like a list of findings that, you know, like. Things, you, yeah, the things we can and can't, can't do. Right. 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 So, so when, when I started this a long time ago, I was told, me as a person has no authorities. It takes the board. I am a member of the board. The board has the authority. I have no power. I've always said we're one-fifth man. Yep. Yeah. Together we're one man. But but what I was saying is that when we say something to someone, when we're out there, people are watching. We're us, representative of the town, and they do see us, and they do take what we say a, a, a different way than if you were just talking to your neighbor. We do carry a lot more weight than maybe we think we do. Can you and raise you're your right. hand? No, I just question. gave you the victory sign. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll raise my hand. Yes, go ahead, Bush. I ju I just want to address one thing. I'm not sure what all the details of that particular incident are, but I think 91A training for all town officials would be a great thing, and I want to take exception to what the town clerk said. If someone comes to the town office and there's documents available, you don't have five days to respond. You have to make them available immediately. The, the interpretation of 91A is, is wrong. If, if something you have to look for something or search for something, then you have time to respond. But if there are documents like minutes, which I believe was what the issue was, that the town clerk's the keeper of the records. If someone comes to the desk and there's records available, you don't have five days to respond. And certainly, that's probably not an issue for the board. If the town clerk doesn't want to respond to that, that's an issue for superior court. But if someone comes and asks to review documents that are available, there's transparency in government. There's an obligation to respond to that. And those things did have to be searched for, just so we're clear about that. If you have to search for the minutes that you're in charge of keeping, then perhaps they should be put somewhere they're more accessible. There's go ahead, uh, go ahead, Pat. I think that particular day, um, the deputy clerk was there training the regular clerk in the office. 
from what I gather, okay, I'm, I'm relaying information. And from what I gather, it was, I don't think Chris, uh, the clerk, the deputy clerk, could access them. Um, and I would dispute the five day hump because I, I heard that five day rule put across us many times. I don't think any, I don't think you have to give something immediately. I think if it's in your fingertips, if it's in, sure you do. Um, but whatever she was requesting was for her personal use, doesn't matter, I guess it wasn't a selective request. They had two people on their own that day in our office. Um, I think the person requesting the information was told that by the deputy clerk, she had no way to get it. And that didn't satisfy the request, based on what I'm hearing here. Um, happens. I, I think, um, I think in the previous time the clerk was here, you would, she would assert that five-day rule. I think, I think what you said when we started, what you were told, <coughs> we don't have any authority. The board has the authority. It's the board. Yeah. I think but I do think that 91 day training. to Fremont and some of the surrounding towns. We can, I'm sure we can set 20 in here. Yes. It was very good. Or the BRC. Or the BRC. Be nice to have it right in our backyard. Good deal. That's what they did on the first day here. They did it your first day here? Oh, it would be nice to do it again. <laughs> All right. Anything else for public meeting? No. Any comments from the public before we go to non-public? I, I wasn't able to query you last week because I had a health issue, but I have a few items that I'd like to throw at the board. Um, and I'll start with the first one. Can you announce who the new town employees are and the rate of pay they were hired at? Um, Tracy Flinders is a new clerk. Um, she is at fourteen fifty an hour. And Andrea Bickham is the planning board administrative assistant at eighteen fifty per hour. And was there a new employee hired in the police department? Not yet. Not yet. <coughs> There's an Additional offer, letter of conditional letter, letter that's been sent out, but no. not a town employee yet. Okay. And then the other issue I wanted to go back and address again was the, the link for the minutes. Um, I did send that to Mainstay and they were working on it. So okay, because you, you can go back to a certain point and then you can. It's just it's a dead link. Yep. And a request. I know you're putting together the town report for the next year. And, and one of the things I look at when I read the minutes and when I look at the town report is I always look at it as if I don't know what's going on, trying to read it as a historical document. And you guys uh, tend to talk about things and it's not always clear if you're not in the loop in the minutes. So to the extent that you can read them as if you didn't know what was happening so that someone reading them 10 or 15 years from now or 100 years can tell what's going on. <coughs> and to that extent, specifically the town report, at some point, we stopped putting the expiration of everybody's term in it. It's, it's on the town officials. I yeah, some, some of them were missing, and maybe it was just the road agents one because that, that one had been overlooked. But if, if the terms can be in the town report, that would be helpful. I think it's the ones that are um, appointed. And with that, I wanted to uh, make sure I recognize the passing of uh, Bob Sanborn. Uh, Long-time resident, lifetime resident. Yep. Select board, planning board, road agent, road agent. Road agent. <coughs> helped things. build this place. Yeah. He's a he's did a BRC, he did everything. He did the old salt shed. Um, it's a bitch where he was very good. Yeah. So. Yes. I had a question um, on the police again. Um, there was talk that um, Chris, one of the part timers was who does approximately one shift a week was hurt. I'll go. <laughs> she might have to go. But one was hurt. There was also, and, and so there was question of how that was gonna be, be filled, but there was also one that left, Joe Gordon, and there was also one that resigned. So we didn't talk about the making up their shifts. <coughs> well, there are there are so there was three part-time shifts that need to be made up. Okay, so Michael Greeley just resigned. You said tonight. Mm -hmm. 
And I was told that he had one to two shifts a week, about. Mm -hmm. That was one to two shifts a week. I'm just yeah. putting it out there. But all, and then Joe Gordon was a part-time guy that left as well. Yeah, so He left last summer. Oh, last summer. It wasn't just now. Okay, I thought it was more recently. Okay, so, so we have at least two part-timers that can't do it. And then we also have, we're down to full-timers. Well, one of the full-timers is a part-timer. Danny is a part timer. Okay. He retired right, right, from right. full time, but he's doing part time. No, I get, I, I get that until the other guy's in or whatever. But, but he's still going to do part time. Yeah. Okay, but are we? I guess when we looked at the budget last night and it just happened fresh in my mind, um, there was only something like, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Chief, I, I think you might have missed what I was saying is that Michael Greeley's resigning and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people well as heard. And somebody had left fairly recently. <laughs> but so there's more than one shift a week that we need to cover by new part timers, or yeah, right. right. And now it's been advised that Josh Turner and Jeremy Worcester are more than happy to step up and do. Oh, okay. Oh, so we have that. Oh, good. Okay. And then um, I think we have six part time positions. So, but in the budget, so I'm a little confused about that. in the budget. You have 32 hours or something budgeted for, <coughs> for part time. I'm just wondering. If we were going to expand that, since we also are missing, full -time. you know, at least one full-time person, right? Yeah, and we have um, so it was, offer out there, so a right. lot of that stuff is in the transition. Right. Flow. So, do we need to have a? I guess do we need to have a limit? I guess you have to budget something, but it seems to me it would be better to add time to part-timers that hopefully are certified from some of the well, department. Yeah, them to do overtime, which we're, the request is to go up 200%, but we're already 200% over that. Like, the request is to go from four four hours per week to 12, and then from, but the last two weeks have been 24 and 28 or something. Do you see what I mean in yeah, overtime? Yeah, overtime. Yeah, so, so I, I know we just like the emphasis to be put a little bit on the, on the hiring and part-timers part that are certified, that we don't have I to pay $32,000. We can yeah. find more part-time. We still got there. a uniform. And we still got to yeah. Do all that the only other thing I had, a, I had a question about uniforms too. Yeah. There was a uniform amount that you approved tonight that was nine thousand eight hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-seven cents for two sets of uniforms. Correct. Those are correct. right. Okay. In the presentation that you gave us last night at the budget committee, it said the average cost was four thousand dollars per uniform, and in the explanation that you gave to the select board it says the average cost of uniform was three thousand yeah, so I you see what i'm saying yeah, so so I the three thousand put together would be six and the four thousand put together would be eight well i can explain that okay well, so the, you got vests you got all those the vests in the in the no, for all that stuff in the four thousand mm -hmm. which is actually probably not enough okay the four thousand includes everything but it's still not enough i mean I think I under budgeted, to be honest with you. Um, it's probably a little over 4,000 to do all the uniforms and jackets and coats and boots and the ballistic vest and the carrier. So to outfit one police officer is probably a little over 4,000. So where did the 3,000? The 3,000 I didn't calculate the ballistic vest and the carriers into that because that comes out of a different line item. We have a uniform line item and then we have an equipment line item, and I was taking <coughs> the vests and the carriers out of the equipment line. Because we got holsters and everything else was part of that 19,000. That wasn't part of the equipment. That's not part of the uniform stuff. Not part of the uniform. We okay. did that so, so the 98,5387 is... Uniforms from Neptune. Uniforms yeah. plus... That's... The holsters was a whole other line. Holsters was 1236.90. But that wasn't part of the uniforms. No. Anyway, I'm just... Saying there's three different numbers and this is closer to five thousand than four thousand or three thousand. So there's just very different information. That's all. Okay. We'll charge the chief for getting more detailed clarification for the budget committee. Anything else from the public? I'm going to make a motion that we go into. Oh, I, I just have. A oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, what about the town report this year? Have we picked who's going to be dedicated to it? Four in advance, and they said two sheets on most Friday, Wednesday's Friday. Now it's, no, it's not. Well, it's well, a 
would re I would be recommending Bob's. Anyway, Bob, I was going to say Bob. Did we, have, did we have to give him one? I, I, don't, I used to have a list of, of all the ones that we gave. Don't you have a memorial page for some of these? Yeah, yeah. usually we try to do it's a dedication to somebody living in a memorial page. Okay. Make a motion that we go into non-public for <coughs> HR. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I do have another question. If if we're gonna, we haven't done anything with the um, fire chief, but don't we talk in public how we're gonna do it? Whether we're gonna go outside or inside? I mean, that shouldn't be in. That doesn't have to be in non-public, right? That part doesn't have to be talking about specific employees. Just in general. Okay, okay. but are we going to talk? Can we talk about that when we come back out then? We can do it now before we go in. What, do you, what, what, what would you like to discuss? I don't think we have we figured anything out yet. We just did. Well, I, I mean, I. His last day was. Well, he, he's. When's he get all his stuff out of the fire station? Next Tuesday. Next, so next Tuesday. He's still coming and doing everything. So. Did you talk to, I, I did get a um, call from Kevin Lemoyne. Um, he feels that, you know, with the administrative assistant that we have over there, that he thinks that the position can be done <coughs> for the 25 hours a week um, for a okay. part-timer. Okay. That was Kevin's, and I so wanted to find out what his feeling was since he was the fire chief. I wanted to get his feeling for mm -hmm. what we have, and he said he feels strongly that we can do a part-time chief, he feels, um, he, you know, and he, I even said to him, I said, Joe's been doing this position, and he said that the issue, he's like, that's his job as the deputy chief. If the chief's not there, then the deputy chief takes place, just like if Ellen's not there, then David would step up, because he's yeah, second but that's a t that, and that's not, that's a temporary thing, that wouldn't temporary be like thing. A, on a permanent basis, or so a semi-permanent basis. He's, he was strongly feeling that we should do a part-time fire chief thinks it's going to be doable for 25 hours because of the experience and the education you get um, from some of these qualified candidates that have retired from their positions that can potentially fill those positions. Why don't we talk to the acting chief and see what his thoughts are as well. Mm -hmm. So now with retired, that can only work 25, correct? Mm -hmm. right. But he feels with the administrative assistant that we have in place over there now that that's doable. So my allowed, why can't we... Well, we're talking, well, why can't we offer it to Deputy Bird on a part-time basis, leave him still as a full-time firefighter, give him the stipend that Chief Campbell is getting, and then keep a per diem guy on the floor for 24 hours a week to offset the 25 that he's doing yeah. admin, yeah. so that he can be a full-time firefighter, part-time chief, he's still there, you still got firefighter Dame on the floor, plus another per diem 24, so Joe can do the I admin and not be doing calls. I still think you still need to go through the process that you would do but that to would, but we have post the position, just like we did for the sergeants. I'm just saying that would like be the idea to teach him the position. We could, yeah, I, we got, I think first consistent. we should talk to the chief, acting chief now, and see what his thoughts are on yeah. that. And, and I think this idea that Dave has here, I think we should explore that further to see if that's a doable situation. I, I really do. I think we got a guy there that's, pretty well liked and he's doing a pretty good job so yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you would classify as a part-time chief you would have to classify as a full-time chief but as a working chief like Sandown has a working right. fire chief he, he, Monday yeah, through Friday he's the first one taking the apparatus yeah. to a call uh, I don't think you could different up well, you have a full-time firefighter right, okay. part-time okay. chief you would have to be that you're gonna have a full-time chief but you're expecting on the floor, on the floor yeah. and fill in for his you can't expect to give him so many admin, admin hours, yeah. but I mean, obviously, you would expect you know, there's an ambulance call where they get up, he can't be leaving. But, 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 but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves because we haven't even talked to him about whether he's even interested in pursuing yeah. it. So, yeah. I think we need to have a conversation with him first before we, you know, and then I'm just I, I still think we have to be consistent and post the position. Well, we can revisit that issue after we talk. After we talk. <laughs> so Joe's here next week anyway for more medicals, so we can. We can talk to him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That'll work for me. Anything else? All right. We're gonna make uh, a motion to go to non-public. Yeah, before we do that, we can the bills in the audience from the store. Oh, Phil, do you have anything for the store? Just hanging out.
All right. Can I, 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 can I, I uh, since Bill's here, I have a, I have a, a question about script. Sorry. <laughs> but he just, he I'm just, gonna put he, and then we'll stop. Okay. But I was, you know, as I'm driving by your store, <coughs> I'm thinking, I, I know it's a state road, and I know we probably need to get them involved one way or another, but I, I, I was just thinking that if we have lights at the store, would that alert people enough to know that there's poop? You know, it's funny thing you say that because um, that would I've been through the whole thing that waned a couple times, yeah. and everyone keeps going back for lights. Yeah. And the initial thing wasn't really lights; it was just an indication that there's pedestrians crossing the road. That was the <coughs> that was the original thing why I approached the town because there was a couple people almost hit, and I've almost been picked off a couple times. Um, and even if you approach the nursing home going from uh, 125 going out to 111, yeah. 101, yeah. there's a couple indications that there's a pedestrian crossing coming up. Yeah. One has a light. I don't, I don't really want a light. I don't care about the light. It's just an indication. Because if you come from here going to the store, and if you're going at 35 miles an hour, 30, it, it, you really, if you for one split second look away or something, you're right up on the store. And I and I done it more. Um, That's why I thought lights at the, you know, from the from the sign of the store out into the road, but not across, you know, the river, because that would be a problem. But it wasn't at night that the problem is. The, the problem, problem is, during the day is that yeah. the way you've got the cars parked, the way people park. But there's a lot. There's no line of sight for people to see if somebody's walking across the street or not. You, you're, it's a blind. There's a blind spot there by the by the car. You can't. So <coughs> what has to happen is you can't have people parked on both sides of the road. But I, you know, that, that would be a, that would be a full time position right there. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, we got people parking every which know, way there. Know, right? But that's the problem. You got people parked on both sides of the road. You can't see if somebody's walking across the street or not. And the state's not interested in putting a crosswalk down there, so no. I mean, we already know that. So, anyways, I just I know. Okay, I, I don't know okay, what the answer. No, I I just wanted to, you to clarify your statement. That is that an opinion you sought from Kevin, or Kevin called you unsolicited to offer that Kevin opinion? Kevin called me. Okay. Kevin reached out. To he me. also called me too. I guess he's called the board. Did he talk to anybody else? No. He didn't call. Yeah, didn't call. Is, is he interested in the position? Is that? <laughs> yeah, I actually asked him. I said, "Is this something you're calling me about? Because you're interested in it?" Nope. Just wanted to have a discussion with you about it. And okay. <coughs> Are you coming back into public for anything else, or will this oh, will the non? Well, we always come back to public. I know, but I mean. If you have other issues, issues. No we got till 10 o'clock like last night. We, we got plenty of time. finish it up. Before you we have to stay and find out. Okay. We're <laughs> coming back to stay up late and have meetings late. Um, we're coming back to public after we're done on public. But I'm going right. to make a motion that we go into. I'm going off for a cigarette. I'll be back. The 91A, <laughs> colon, 315. Try to smoke and drink it after this meeting. Let me the personal issues. Do you have a motion? I made the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye